Hi, I'm gonna tell you uh, tell you about a little town in West Texas called Ozona. That's where we're driving right now. I've never come in this way, and I'm really impressed with these huge houses that were probably owned by the ranch families who also had ranches out of town. They'd have a big house in town, and uh, you know where they could have their fun, wear their fancy clothes. Look at this house here. It does seem that it's kind of getting a little run down a bit, Ozana, since the last time I was here about 20 years ago. It does not seem quite as well cared for, and a couple of these mansions are uh, for sale. The reason I'm here is because of a woman I care very much about. She's in her 70s, and right now she's on her farm in uh, the Berkshires of Massachusetts. And she was my ex-mother-in-law. Her name is Janine, and uh, we're, we're super close. Uh, even though we haven't always been close, we've had our differences of opinion for sure, and she's, uh, she's hard-headed as hell. Um, of course, I'm not, but, but she is for sure. She grew up here in Ozona, Ozona, Texas, in Crockett County, which is named after Davy Crockett. Here's the museum in honor of Davy Crockett. And there's uh, Georgina, Georgina Jacqueline Garcia. She must be the valedictorian for the Ozona High School class of 2020. I'm gonna take you around the square. This is so beautiful how, beautiful how they're honoring their graduating seniors with these posters. So Janine grew up here as a child uh, with her parents. Her father worked at the bank. I think he was a teller at the bank. And I believe her mother was a nurse. Her mother was also a water witch, which means that she could divine where water was. She would hold a stick out in front and people would hire her to uh, find them water or she would do it for free, I'm not sure. I knew both of them. Not very well, but I knew them. Her father, uh, I think the first time I met him was at my wedding, a very fancy wedding in Massachusetts at Janine's farm, where she, is, where she has owned since the 60s. Um, I got married her daughter, a lovely, beautiful, very beautiful woman named Rin. We met when we were young at a 12-step meeting, and we took it from there. Had a tumultuous 18-year run with three children, and then, then we divorced. She took her own life about five years later when the kids were young. And that's when Janine and I had quit talking to each other during the divorce. And for about six years afterwards, when Rin died, we became close again and we've been close ever since. And I value our relationship very much. She calls me her son-in-law and I call her my ex-mother-in-law. And that's, that's just really fine the way that is. So this is 12th Street in Ozona. Janine grew up in a modest house here in Ozona and always had ambitions. She had friends who, uh, family friends who were ranchers, who were wealthy, who would fly to Paris, fly to New York, and go places to buy clothing subscribed to uh, Vogue magazine and they would give her the Vogue magazines. And she told me once that she remembered sitting on the front porch of her house here in Ozona, the big clouds floating in the air, the hot wind, the pecans, the horses, the silence, the deadness, the nothingness of this sweet little town. And she would dream about living in Manhattan and being a designer. She was five years old when she first had that dream with a Vogue magazine on her lap. And she became a designer. And she moved to New York. And she became wealthy and she also became kind of famous. And she was just that little kid from Ozona. And I find that story so remarkable, especially when I drive around here, because this town is a very nice town for West Texas, exceedingly nice. Look at this beautiful uh, 
vernacular Texas house. Oh my gosh, is that lovely? Um, but Ozona is surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of miles of high desert where nothing grows but I suppose juniper and other scrub trees, mesquite, and cattle wander around here and there, but you see nothing. Hundreds of miles. You can drive 150 miles before you get to the nearest town of any any import. And Janine uh, took herself out of here to New York. She gave birth to her daughter, Rin. I married that daughter. When I met Rin, three hours after we met, she she moved uh, to London for the summer. Exactly three hours after we met, she got in a limousine in front of her apartment on West 34th Street. This is about 1985, 84, and moved to London. Here we are again to give you another look at these big houses. And I went to meet her a month or two later. We'd corresponded and I would call her answering machine to hear her voice. Here's what she said. Don't be just another hang up call, leave a message. And I must have called that number 50 times over the summer to hear her voice. And I flew to London and we met and we were madly in love even before I got to London. And we came back on a plane and I had never met anyone like Rin. She was very fancy and elegant and wild. And her mother picked us up at JFK in a burgundy Jaguar. I had never ridden in a Jaguar like that. I'd ridden in some old beat up Jaguars before, but never one like that. And I felt embarrassed. I felt odd. I felt people like people were staring at us as we drove back into the city. But I became really used to riding around in that Jaguar, honestly, and borrowed it all the time. Janine had a huge influence on my life. There's Davy Crockett right there. I have to sh focus on that little quote. There's Davy Crockett, and he says, be sure you are right, then go ahead. I talked to Janine today on the phone. And she said, that was our town motto. And I kind of think that was Janine's motto. Make sure you are right and go ahead. And that's what she did. And uh, I just want to uh, thank her, honestly, for all she's done for me and all she brought into my life, including her beautiful daughter, who we all miss very much. So here's to you, Ozona and Janine.